Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk about Shaman's Rift. The map is still under development, so specific elements may still change, but my aim here is to provide a general overview so that we're all on the same page and players of all skill levels can work together and enjoy the experience. First, we can see the map has two major fortresses and three lanes that connect these two bases. Each player is assigned to a specific lane where they have essentially a 1v1 matchup. The goal is to push forward, securing ground with huts and towers. The further you can push, the more help you are providing to your team. If you can draw enough attention, you may even get doubled which counts as a major success. The more resources the enemy sends your way, the less they have to fight the war on other fronts. Don't give up or get discouraged when your opponent brings help from his allies. Instead, consider this a major win for your team as you take the pressure off other areas of the map. In addition to the three laners, there is also a jungler. The jungler isn't assigned to any particular lane, instead they're free to roam the map to offer support where needed. The jungler is perhaps the most important player on the team as they are tasked with global awareness and team management. They need to know the state of every lane so they can make the critical strategic decisions to advance the team's chances at success. The jungler can support their lanes with troops, help build additional defense, secure uncontested territory, and make decisive attacks turning the tides wherever it's needed most. The jungler is also given land bridge, though it can only store one cast at a time, but still giving him the opportunity to reshape the landscape at critical junctions. As a laner, you want to be requesting assistance as little as possible. Call for help when you need it, but know that every troop sent from your allies is a troop not sent to battle somewhere else. As long as the fortress isn't at risk of being penetrated, you're better to continue the fight without taxing your team with demands for reinforcements. Any decent jungler will already be aware of the state of your matchup and decide where they can be the most useful. Learn to take the heat on your own so your jungler is free to make a decisive blow somewhere else. Next, let's talk about wood. There are a few trees in the base, but certainly not enough to build an upgrade given the huge buildable area within the fortress. Instead, the bulk of your wood needs to come from the battlefield. The areas between the lanes are brimming with trees in a region I like to call the jungle. Brave blasting in the jungle is not only allowed, but encouraged. Keep an eye on your wood gathering braves or just send them in smaller groups. And be sure to blast enemy braves, preventing your opponent from outpacing you in buildings. Secure the jungle hills with towers and reap nearly unlimited quantities of wood. Disconnect your opponent's access to their jungle and watch them wither. If you get pushed all the way back to your fortress entrance or get hopelessly cut off from jungle access, you'll need to start routing your braves to a different lane to retrieve wood. Provide extra wood to your team if possible and never stop building. Flatten is 25% cheaper here, so get creative with reshaping the land in ways that offer strategic advantages for battle and for retrieving that precious wood. To make communication easier, each lane is given a name. Rather than subjective terms like right and left, let's use the terms top, middle, and bottom. Top, mid, and bot for short. To distinguish, I have used pointy trees on top and bushy trees on bottom. Also remember to use the I key to provide ping notifications to the entire team. Strive to check your allies' pings when able, simply click the ping drop-down notification to zoom to it, and click the notification again to zoom back to where you were. Ping multiple times for urgent threats, and always check ping notifications immediately if several appear in a short time. Always read team chat, and use K to respond privately back to your team. At the start of the game, each player is given a few huts and towers to get things rolling. Use the shift fill command to fill your towers at the start of the game, and take note of the wood piles on the ground marking out your territory within the fortress. Don't leave extra space for your allies, and don't ever build over the line. Often the team that wins is simply the team with less internal conflict. Finally, there are three map objectives that appear at specific intervals into the game. First at top, then at bot, lastly at mid. Top, bot, mid. These objectives appear in the form of gargoyles. When a gargoyle appears, the ground will shake and all shamans will cast a convert the entire distance of the map to signal the appearance of the new objective. The top guard simply provides a single cast of volcano. This is powerful, sure, but not necessarily useful anytime soon. This means that top guard can be sacrificed to distract the other team as an opportunity for you to make a move elsewhere. A decision whose ramifications won't be realized for your team until much later into the match. Then, not much longer after top guard, bot guard will appear. The fight for this objective is much more tense and brutal. The bottom gargoyle unleashes five AODs. However, these dragons have been weakened and given a much shorter duration timer. They provide an opportunity for a major push, but then quickly expire. 
Lastly, it's the finale. A major catastrophe of lava flow unfolds at mid. The water is largely filled in and the battle to end the match begins immediately. Even a losing team has this opportunity for a comeback, but having a weak defense and low pop makes this fight a difficult uphill battle. Upset wins are possible here, so the winning team needs to pull together everything they've got for a clean, decisive final battle to secure the gargoyle and win the game. Before we wrap up, I want to talk strategy. First, I'd like to define strategy as a plan of action designed to achieve a major overall goal. In contrast, tactics are the specific actions you undertake to accomplish your strategy. Strategy is the plan, tactics are the details. Someone can be good at one and very bad at the other. So when it comes to team composition, be mindful of who on your team excels at which point. Now, there is no correct way to arrange your team, but I did design the map with a meta in mind. I don't want my words here regarding this early release of the map to be prescriptive, but I think hearing this will be better than going in blind. Bot lane was designed for your best player to duke it out with the other team's best player. The lane is big, tons of wildies, tons of wood. Perfect for your team's bruiser. The AOD Garg spawns down here as well, far out of reach of the main base, and the lane itself offers a more direct route to the enemy base than the winding path of top lane. Mid is for your team's weakest player. There's certainly no shame in being the weakest player, and there's still plenty a mid laner can accomplish. Objective one is simply to hold the front gate. Being in the middle of the map means you will get attacked by more than just the opposing mid laner. If you can soak up that damage and hold your front line, you've done an amazing service to your team. Get in a tower and camp if you have to, just hold that line. Objective two is to push up just like any other lane, get towers at mid, secure the nearby jungle hills, and bring in loads of wood. Even strike back at the enemy mid lane with some EQs and Torns if you can, but always keep expanding your defense. If your lane goes quiet for a while, maybe send some troops to assist your allies, but keep focus on defending your entrance. Harass the enemy jungler when he passes through mid, and be ready to answer a call of emergency if one of your other lanes is losing badly. I don't have too much to say for top lane, but strategy is key here more than brute force. The skinny paths, early gargoyle, and expansive side island require creativity more than raw strength. The tiny center island offers a great platform for towers with a well-placed flatten, and the more limited wood supply means more opportunity to deprive your opponent of the precious resource. Jungle, though, is probably the most important position. Without having a lane to defend, the jungler is free to gather information to plan the strategy. He has the time to talk to his teammates and keep them calm, and to exploit weak points in the enemy defense everyone else is too busy to notice. He has the responsibility to use his land bridge aggressively, and the clarity to plan for and secure all three gargoyles. The jungler role was designed for your team's nicest player. Team morale and calm, critical thinking are required for a successful team. More important than raw skill is a jungler who can calmly assess the entire map and offer support where it's needed. I want my bruisers in lane fighting, while I need a level head managing the team. For any lane that has successfully pushed up to the halfway point, they then have the opportunity to roam. While I would usually prefer my laners focus on their lane exclusively, there will be times where roaming is a necessity. Never leave your lane undefended for long, but a well-timed gank can certainly change a game. Just use this move sparingly, because leaving your lane at the wrong moment will be a disaster that your entire team will be brought to suffer. There's plenty more variations and room for creativity than I could possibly hope to cram into a single video, but hopefully I've provided enough of an overview here to get both noobs and pros alike on the same page and working together in the heat of battle. Keep calm, stay kind, take responsibility for your mistakes, and remember, it's not over until Midgarg is secured. Thanks for watching.